just seems like you're talking almost like about whether you're going for Netflix or Hulu. <laughs> it's like nothing. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. How's it going? What's happening? What's happening is it's caller day and it's been a minute it's since we've a done while. a caller session actually. And we're excited. We have a very enthusiastic caller with us today. Mm-hmm. We are today joined by Lauren. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi guys, how are you? Do you mind giving us your age, the ages of the people in question, your location, whatever you're comfortable sharing and your story, please? Sure. So I'm 29 years old. I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York. The guy that I'm calling about, he is 30 years old and he's also from New York. And the other person, I don't know how, I mean, she is pretty relevant, but I'm not sure about her age. Maybe like 26. All right, let's hear what's going on. So back in Feb 2022, I went on a date with a guy I met on Hinge and the date went really well. And we instantly just, you know, it was, it was really fast to a point where after a month he was like, you know, I don't think I have the time that you deserve, blah, blah, blah. He basically, I saw him backing out. So I put him on the spot and he used that excuse to get out of it. And I was like, you know, that's fine. You know, no harm done. Bye-bye. I didn't contact him. He didn't contact me. But then a month later, he was like, hey, I was wondering if you'd like to go for a walk. You know, we're in the same neighborhood. And I was like, I wasn't interested, but I did sign a lease on a building that was like right in front of his building. So I was like, I'm going to bump into this guy. Might as well just, you know, take this walk. So then on that walk, he profusely apologized about, you know, screwing it up the first time. And he was like, please give me a second chance, you know, all that stuff. And I was just like, I was like, fine. You know, I have nothing going on. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, sorry. I already have questions. Were you, wasn't a part of you a little like, huh, at all? Or were you totally done with him? No, I mean, I was interested. He just seemed so sincere. And when he said, I really feel bad for screwing it up, like he kind of had tears in his eyes. So I just felt so bad that I was like, sure. You know, I said, we can take it slow this time around, but I'll give you a second chance. So then second time around, I did see that he was doing the same thing that he did the first time around, which is kind of like texting, but not keeping it alive, you know just checking in here and there, not being very proactive. And to be very honest with you, I was really excited to move into this building. You know, I wanted to be single. It was going to be summer. I was like excited. Like there's a lot of good looking people in this building. So I was like, <laughs> I'll just you know, let me just use this as, a, as an excuse to get rid of him this time again. You know, so I did that and I was not upset about it at all. So that was me. And then, you know, I had a great summer and I had one fling which ended and I was a little sad about that fling. So I decided to reach out to this guy. Let's call him Styles. Um, and Wait, I reached you're, you're reaching out to this original guy we were talking about? Yeah, the yeah first one? Because, because I bumped into him a week ago, like oh. in August. I saw him on the streets. Um, so I was just like, you know, we're neighbors. We can be friends, you know, and a lot well, of my. Did you want to be friends or, yeah. or more? Friends, sure. I was just bored, to be very honest with you. Just friends, sure, or just friends? I mean, the thing is that I feel like we never really gave our situation a real shot. You know, I think both of us were not ready for it the first time around. And second time around, we were also not ready for it. So Both of you, or you think he wasn't? I don't think I was either, because I was really excited to move to this building. I feel like if I really liked him, I would have been sad, you know? Okay. Okay. All right. So keep, keep going. going. So <laughs> I feel like I'm already confusing you guys. No, <laughs> no. We just have questions. No, I, I think we're all the same page. Confusing yeah, me. we are emotionally. Yeah, I'm confused of where your emotions are, but yes, we'll find out. Same. Let's, let's, oh, get my. Out. let's get on um, with it. <laughs> so I think I reached out to him in September. So when I reached out to him to be friends, he flat out said, I can't be friends with you. I'm too physically attracted to you. We can get into like a friends with benefits relationship. I feel like that would work because we live right across each other. So I was just like, I'm not sure about it, but why don't you come over and we'll figure it out? You know, (laughs) (laughs) fill out some paperwork, you know, (laughs) 
Wait, he offered that like it was. That's a, amazing. That is. Can amazing. you imagine? Like, yeah, I don't think we could be friends, yeah. but we could be friends with benefits. Yeah, because I'm interested. too attracted to you to be I your mean, friend. If he said it that matter of factly, I, I have to give him credit. <laughs> he it's did. It was a paragraph. I had to reread it. I was like, no way. He, like, I was impressed I by mean, that. That is impressive. Oh wait, so he didn't even say it. It was a text. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, so I reached out to him, and he, I was like, you know, we're neighbors. Like, we can be friends, right? And he was like. No, we can't be friends. Like, I feel like I'm too attracted to you. And last time I saw you, you looked really good. You know, with the emoji with like a sweaty smiley. Oh, emoji. You, know, so, you know, this guy's got strong game. He does. That, that, he, that, yeah, but that's whatever. It worked. Yeah, it did kind of work. I, that, it's, Wait, let's keep going. Let's you know, it's going. not it's not like this. It's not strong, like leading man Hollywood game. No, but it's, it's like it's like sort of undercover CIA kind of under game. the radar. Game. He's, he's, he's yeah. very, very sneaky, yeah. very sneaky game. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah. So when he came over, I, I just wasn't feeling it. You know, I was like, no, I don't you know, I don't want to or anything. So he didn't get anything. Oh, uh, so yeah, he did it. But <laughs> he has a dog. And I always had a very strong connection with this dog. Um, we'll call her Abby. Her name is Abby. Um, and she's just so special. You know, like we go to farmers market together, like we do everything together. So I always offered him I was like, hey, like, you know, since we're neighbors, if you ever need someone to pet sit her, like, I'm down. So he, he was like, yeah, sure. Like, so little by little, like, I was pet sitting Abby like every week and sometimes he would get lucky, you know, (laughs) it was like, if if that makes sense. Okay. All right. It sounds like Abby was sort of keeping your relationship alive. Yeah, it was. Okay. And like, I would have her for more than a week sometimes, you know, like he would go home for Thanksgiving and then sometimes he would pick her up. So he would get really, it was like a win-win for all of us, you know? Okay. I got a best friend. Abby got like a best friend and he got a lot of benefits, financial and all all, all others. Cause you know, okay. he saved a lot of money by having like a free babysitter whenever he wants. Okay. So this went on for, I would say up until last weekend, so, you know, like, so the entire 2023, every t- anytime he needed Abby, I was there for her. And We would hook up here and there, and I tried to stop it multiple times, you know? I was like, hey, it's a new year, let's not do it anymore, you know? Hey, I just went to Hawaii, like, I got a cleanse, let's not do it anymore. So every time I I tried to stop it, he would just keep trying, and sometimes he would get lucky. And then in July, he moved to a different neighborhood 20 minutes away. That's when it actually stopped. And I was dating this summer, and, you know, I didn't want to, like, hook up with him while dating other guys. Mm. So I was really strict with him. Um, I would say in September, I started noticing some, you know, little changes. So usually I'm the one who initiates texting because I'm like, when am I going to see her next? You know, when I FaceTime him, I'm like, can I see Abby? So I usually do that with him. But in September, he was the one reaching out more and he was the one kind of having like these long text conversations. And he, he even bought me like three bottles of wine like this one time. And I told my friend, I was like, it's a little weird that he's being really nice these days. And then I would say mid-October, I was out with my friends and, you know, we randomly ended up talking and he was like, hey, why don't you come to this disco place? You know, I'm here with my friends. And I looked at my friend and we were like, do you really want to go? I'm like, yeah, we have nothing going on. So let's go. So we went. So then when we, you know, went to the disco, he was there with his group of friends and he was, his friends are like, oh, so how many times do you see Abby? I heard like, you see her all the time. And I'm like, it's none of your business, but whatever. I mean, they were pretty nice overall. And it was very strange because it, he was definitely a little tipsy and he was on drugs, nothing heavy, but, you know, I could tell he was very happy and I was a little tipsy. So we were literally like making out like in the middle of the dance floor, you know, just like dancing. And then he said a lot of things, you know, he said things like, I want to do this with you every weekend. You know, he was like, I love the fact that you always challenge me. And I was just like, very confused by that too, because we always fight about politics. Like everything you should not be talking about, we talk about. And we usually disagree on things and we're always like back and forth about it. So I was surprised that he brought that up during like, you know, in the middle of a disco, but I was like, fine. So I ended up going over to his place. And then after we hooked up, I was like, I want to go home, you know, I want to start my day tomorrow. And he was like, no, like, please stay. Like, I want to cuddle. And like, 
he was extremely affectionate that entire night. And then the next day, like, he just kissed me goodbye. And I'm like, we don't do that. And he was like, yeah, you know, like he just seemed like exasperated. And I was like, okay. So I go home and I'm just like, what just happened? You know, I was just very confused. And I just, you know, decided to take my time figuring things out. I was like, let me see if I like him, you know? And I didn't bring up the disco night with him. And a weekend later we saw each other again. And it was very comfortable, like something had shifted, but none of us brought up the disco night. And the reason I didn't want to bring it up is because since I didn't know where to go with it, I didn't want to bring it up yet, if that makes sense. And then I realized that our relationship has a lot of pluses, you know, like we're very comfortable around each other. We're very like, he's someone that I can just be myself with and no makeup, nothing. And he's obsessed with me. Like I never have to initiate anything with him. So I feel like it says, you know, a lot when you have someone who's so obsessed with you in a little bit, like, you know, and who kind of like you for who you are, you know, yeah. and I really like him for who he is, too. Like, he's the type of guy that, you know, we were walking on the street once and he saw like a coffee machine in the garbage. And he was like, I was like, you're not going to take that, are you? And he was like, I shouldn't. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? So, no, he did it. Oh. Uh, was it an espresso or like? <laughs> it was Keurig? Like one of those $30 coffee. It wasn't even like you know, an espresso. It was like, yeah, it was a really old. He doesn't need it. So where does that bring us now? What's the question? So, so that happened, I would say, from the disco night till mid-November. Okay. And I would say in this one month, I realized that I want to just stay friends with him because I feel like getting into a relationship would be too soon. And because I'm pushing 30 and he's 30, if we do get into it, it's going to be something serious. So I wanted to take some more time to figure it out, if that makes sense. So I thought the best resolution was to keep it at bay. Um, and also during this time, I had a guy that I dated in summer reach out to me. And one thing that I feel like is lacking between me and Styles is that we don't have that great of a physical connection like the way I have with other guys. So I feel like that always kind of made me hesitant to getting into a relationship with him. Wait, wait, wait. wait Not that great a physical connection. Wait, well, I thought that there I, okay, was like I am friends with benefits for like a year. Very confused. Yeah. I'm well, very but, but confused. I know me too, but we're going to, I want her to get to the question. But when you say not that great a physical connection. Well, we do. Look, it's all great, but. I feel like the guy that I met in summer, the one that I met at disco, he was the kind of guy that, you know, I just wanted to jump on top of him, you know, Wait, like that you met at disco. This is a different. Oh, guy? No, no, sorry. Sorry. In summer. Some other oh, guy. Okay. That was like, that was about to be really I, confusing. <laughs> so it was like, you know, very intense. Connect okay. Yeah, connect yeah, yeah. So with styles, the connection is there, but it's not that intense where I want to jump on top of him kind of thing, if that makes sense. Mm. But. But it seems like the only thing you guys were really doing was hooking up. I mean, for a while. Well, so when he, so when during this whole year when he would come to pick up Abby, we would watch TV together. We would talk like hookup was also there. But for me, it was like I enjoyed his company more than hooking up with him. Did you go was. out with him ever? Did you go on dates where you went to dinner? Like, well, we've see a gone show? on like, I mean, we've gone on like lunches and breakfast and walks. Like so, after hooking up. Yeah, yeah. This whole year we were doing everything. Like now that I look back. No, at this, I mean, like you did like after you hooked up, you'd wake up and you go to breakfast or lunch. Sometimes I would say, but I don't remember us hooking up during the daytime. I feel like majority of the time it was like he would pick Abby up and then, you know. Andy okay. means like the morning after. Yeah, like I'm saying, you, did you say like, hey, I want to get lunch with you today? You'd go have lunch with him and be like, okay, bye. I'll talk to yeah. you in a few days. Or was it just like always hooking up had to do with the meetups? Like well, was there the ever no had hooking up meetups? meetups? But then like sometimes let's say, oh, can you, do you want to, you know, I was like, can I see Abby? And he's like, oh, I'm gonna, grabbing lunch. I'm like, can I, you know, and then we would just go grab lunch together. Okay. Okay. So we would hang out outside of that. No, okay. I mean, look, it was it was decent, I would say. You know, not the best of the best, but decent. Okay. Yeah. All right, keep All right. going. Uh, keep decent going. enough where I didn't mind having him. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, and, so keep keep it going. Yeah. So we go to a bar and this was not hooking up. This was just as friends, so, you know. We were just like, okay, you know, um I was like, yeah, do you want me to take care of Abby this week? And he's like, sure. Like, okay, meet me at a bar, sure. So we were just drinking and there's something like there's an elephant in the room, the disco night that we're not talking about. 
And I was like, yeah, do you remember that night? And he was like, yeah, I do. And he was like, I was really drunk. And I was like, you said a lot of things, you know? And he was like, yeah, but I was drunk. And I was like, "Mm, don't you think people are more honest when they're drunk? And he was like, I don't know. I don't think so. So then I can, I I could sense that he was kind of like pulling back. Exactly. So I was like, yeah, I mean, like, I I love having you as a friend. I hope we can continue this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love having you as a friend too. You know, let's just be friends, whatever. And he's also talking about like dating apps and like how he's not doing well on dating apps. You know, he's not meeting girls. Like he's like, I don't know. I'm just not doing well. I'm not even getting like the bare minimum. And then after like half an hour, something was like off, you know? And I was like, what's going on? You know? And he was like, I don't know if I can tell you this. And I was like, just tell me, you're really freaking me out. And he goes, for the past couple of months, I've just had like this really strong feelings for my direct report at work. So I was like, wait, what? Like, disco night was last Uh night. So you said for the past couple of months, you've had strong feelings for someone else. And at that point, he was so broken that I kind of put my feelings aside and kind of just try to talk through this situation with her. And he was just like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, I could lose my job over this. She has a boyfriend, all these stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, have you ever tried asking her about the boyfriend? You know, like he's like, no, I can't ask her about the boyfriend. I'm having a hard time going to work because my feelings for her are so strong. And I was just like, you know, trying to help him out, whatever. And then I got home and then I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute. So this whole month, he made me think he had feelings for me. Meanwhile, he had feelings for someone else. And he told me all these things at disco night, knowing he had feelings for someone else. I just thought that was really messed up, you know? So, you you know, I, there's something I'm noticing here. You keep calling disco night disco night <laughs> as if it's like a national holiday <laughs> and 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 i and i respect that i know it was an important moment for you but i bet you he does not call disco night disco night mm-hmm. i don't think he thinks of disco night as anything and i think that that's the big issue here is that you should take him for his word that he was wasted and whatever he said that night i don't think was his true feelings oh, i don't think yeah. it was in in vino veritas i think it was just drunk mm. The reason I call it disco night is because him and I, we have never expressed any like, like we, we have been very clear about this relationship. You know, we've never expressed feelings for each other. We've never said anything like I miss you. We've never kissed each other goodbye. We knew from the beginning, these are things we cannot do. And then that week, his texting was also kind of like, you know, so that's the thing after the disco wait, 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 night, his texting was kind of like what? It was like, he would text me like like at 10 p.m. and we start talking about life. Like, you know, it was like our relationship was always very like cookie cutter. You know, it was like, just talk about Abby when we text each other. We hook up, sure, but, um, (laughs) you know, we never talk about feelings. Every time we were interested in someone, every time I went on a date, I would tell him about it. Every time I even met a guy, I would talk about it. Every time he met a girl, he would tell me about her. So we have been extremely transparent. And after the disco night, you know something? Let's even cross the disco night out. It's the fact that he was texting me all those things the week later. Mm. And I kind of tested him that weekend after when he was sober. You know, I was like, you know, I kind of missed you this week. You know, I was just wondering what he would say. And he was like, yeah, me too. I really missed you. You know, so I was like pissed off because I was like, I'm always honest with you. And, you know, if the disco night was just physical, I'm okay with that. You know, it's the fact that he said all those things. And he kind of planted a seed in my mind while knowing he had feelings for someone else. That's what I was really pissed about. I wasn't pissed about the physical thing because that has happened. And sometimes, you know, we're drunk, we do things, whatever. I don't care about that. Um, So the next day I sat him down and I said, listen, you, we're supposed to be honest in this situation. And you didn't tell me about this girl. You led me to believe something during the disco night and days after you you let me think that you let me stay in that fog you know and had i not brought it up during the like the outing the night before you would have never brought this up so how long do you think this would have lasted in me thinking you have feelings for me while i'm trying to work through my feelings for you and he was like well the disco night i was drunk you know and i was like yeah but a week the week after you weren't and you still did a lot of things that is very you know romantic or more emotional i would say he was like 
yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, and then he started crying. And then, you know, I was just like, oh God, like, let me dial it back a bit. He was like, you know, you can have feelings for two people at the same time. And I was like, okay, I, I guess. And he was like, well, the feelings I have for her is very different than the feelings I have for you. And he was just so broken about this situation that at that moment, I, like all my anger towards him just got like pushed to the side. Cause I was just trying to like console him, you know? So yeah. So what's I, the question? Like, where does that bring us today? So basically I ended things with him a week ago. Um, and my question is, should I not talk about this? Like this could literally be my closure, like this podcast right now, you know, should I just let it go? Or do you think this is something that, you know, I can be, you know, cause he said when I, when we were ending things last week, he said, you know, I would prefer us to maybe have like friendship where we just go out for lunch and, you know, exchange Abby here and there. Or should we like, you know, that's his preference. Like he's like, we don't have to ever come to each other's apartment. We can keep this relationship like outside. Uh, I just don't think it's possible because last weekend I saw him two times when he picked her up and dropped her off. And both times we hooked up and both times it was really, really good. Oh my God. I mean, I, there's a, I think there's a pattern here. <laughs> So Andy, yesterday I learned about a new feature on HelloFresh that I'm excited to tell you about. Ooh. I saved it for this ad to tell you. I'm excited. Did you know that you can filter your meal selections by it being veggie, calorie smart, or protein smart, or quick and easy? I did not know that. I was, as you know, I was having this moment where I was like, I want to try eating more vegan meals. And let me tell you, most of these meal delivery kits do not have many options for you. It's either like you go full vegan, like that's all that meal delivery kit does, or it's just not an option. I love that with HelloFresh, they have tons of veggie options. And so you can filter it. So that's all that shows up for you. And let me tell you, you do not get sick of their meals because they have over 45 different options to choose from every week. 45 is enough. That's over the threshold <laughs> of enough. So HelloFresh is a meal delivery kit that delivers ingredients and recipes to your door. It gives you everything you need to create delicious, healthy meals at home. And it's America's number one meal kit. It's true. You know, when people say America's number one, I'm like, oh, okay. Most of the time they're lying. HelloFresh. No is, one's going to call you out on it. No, you could right? say no one's going to sue you for saying America's number one. Yes. It's but, just a claim anyone can make. But who's beating HelloFresh in the meal delivery kit in this country? No one's beating them. They've been around forever and they have figured out all the bumps right down to the fact that they have 15 minute recipes. So in case you are really one of those people that's like, okay, I can't, I don't have time for that. Like I hear you talking about that. I hear why that might be good for some people, but I come home, I'm starving or I have to put food on the table for my family. They have 15 minute recipes. And can I tell you something? After this recording session, we're going to hit up one of those 15 minute yes. recipes and I couldn't <laughs> be more excited. Yes. And if we're in between deliveries, we know how to cook now. Right. I whipped up a soup the other day. Oh, a right. soup. You did. And it was so good. It was good. It was a HelloFresh soup, actually. It's just no, that you I, had. It was a non no, no, no. It was a HelloFresh soup. It just didn't use the ingredients they had sent. You had kept the recipe and made it yourself. I wanted them to think that I had just made it from scratch. <laughs> so go to HelloFresh.com slash Shandy Free and use code Shandy Free for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Shandy Free with code Shandy Free. So Andy, it's 2024 and everyone knows about New Year's resolutions. Yeah, we did don't you, keep them. Did you know that one in five people have learning a new language as something on their bucket list? On bucket list? Yes. And yet, how many people actually do it? Because you know why it's so hard to learn a language, usually when you live in your native speaking country, is because you learn by immersion, by doing something consistently every day. And that's why Babbel is such a game changer. And Babbel makes something that's very daunting, something a little fun. Yes, it gamifies learning a new language. I, I've taken German classes in Germany before, and this is, I've got to say, just more fun. I'm sorry it is. You know what it reminds me of is when you're little... And everything's like a little cartoony and cute. It is cute. And you know what else it is? It is the quickest way to getting cooler. <laughs> Are we shaming people into learning new languages? No, it's like no. you're not cool unless you know more languages. Like you don't have to be cool. But if you want to be a little cooler, learn a new language. I will say I am always blown away when I meet someone and they just flip into another language. Yeah. It always, for me, no matter who they are, whether they're already great or they're super annoying, mm -hmm. they go up a full notch yes. for me. And you know what? In today's world, things are getting very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. And you know what's a great way to have an edge? 
is to know a new language. Yes. And those 10 minute lessons they provide are designed by 150 language experts and they also have speech recognition technology. So it's not just about reading and listening. You actually say the words into your phone and they're like, oh, actually, hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Your accent. Not that great. So we have a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, our listeners, the Shandies, can get 55% off your Babbel subscription when you go to babbel.com slash dear Shandy. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash dear Shandy. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash dear Shandy. Rules and restrictions may apply. And both times we hooked up and both times it was really, really good. (laughs) I mean, I I think there's a pattern here. (laughs) Wait, you say that like it just happens. Yeah. Well, so you like it happens to you. Well, what happened is that this time it didn't happen to me. I feel like I was really into it too. So what happened is this last month, a lot of things happened to me where I got a new therapist. Like I, I did a lot of soul searching, you know? And I mean, that that's like another hour, but I feel like what I have realized with this relationship is that a lot of things that he brings to the table are things that I can live with. Like if I, if, our situation was the way it is, I feel like I would be pretty happy. Like I'm a very happy single person. So having him as an addition, a guy like him does fit well with me. I never thought of relationship in that way. You know, I thought it was supposed to be something grand, like the summer guy where physical, like boom and all that stuff. But I don't think about it anymore, you know, like in that sense. Okay, you, well, we just bounced at the same time. Okay, you go first. I just have a question. Do you want to find a stable, loving, healthy relationship with a man? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, so then forget about this. Stop stop doing this with this guy. It's over. Okay, for me, I'm focused on something else. This is something that's been distracting me. That's the first point. Yes, the answer to your question is done done like put it out of your mind for now because it's screwing up your other dating for me this guy is just a catalyst for in my opinion you doing some soul searching about your own emotional vulnerability your entire story describes him and the actions that occur several of which are actions that you actively partake in everything from just the the mild which is like hey do you want me to look after Abby this weekend to fully engaging in like regular hookups and look zero judgment. It's just that it's all like analyzing his behavior. I'm not getting a lot of, I feel this way about him when he did that. It made me feel good. I felt happy. In fact, the one time I really saw you smile, like truly like it was like from the heart was when you were describing him wanting to take the coffee maker from the garbage. It was like this quirky thing, this quirky moment you had shared. And I think that you like or liked this guy way more than you're letting on. And I think that it will be an amazing journey, amazing journey for you to be honest with yourself about that, because then you might be surprised by how much your own emotional vulnerability will open up another person's emotional vulnerability. I have a feeling you're really hard to read in terms of like any kind of this situationship. If I were in a situationship with you, I would not know where you stand. It's It feels like you keep your cards close to the vest and you're not willing to show one card until someone else shows you their whole deck. Yeah. Do you th- I mean, think I'm onto something? No, you're on point. Okay. Yeah, I agree with what you said. Finally, at the end of the story, you're like, I feel like I was expecting something grand. But actually, he fits in my life really well. Like the thing you worded it, it was so distant the way you worded it, but it was still the closest you were going to get, which was I could live with it. Yeah, I think I always thought, you know, relationship was going to be a certain way. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, so after the disco night, when he came over, we were just cuddling, we hooked up and he just was like, can I watch football? And I was like, "Okay, fine. Like, I have to clean my apartment. So he just, you know, he he just like took an, he was watching football and then he took a nap and I was just like, this is awesome. You know, like he's doing his own thing. I'm doing my own thing. And we're just coexisting together without Mm. needing each other. And I think you're right. I think I did like him more than I let on, which is why I told him last weekend when I was ending things, I said, I just don't think that, you know, this is healthy for us. And like Andy said, I was like, this is going to stop us from meeting other people and Mm. being proactive about dating. I'm going to be honest. I I do think I was delusional this entire year, you know, 
that's one of the realizations I've had is because I always said, you know, he's just a friend. Like all my friends are like, like, come on, like this has been going on for way too long. They're like, oh, friends with benefits just should only last a couple of months. It shouldn't last over a year. I, delusional isn't quite the word I would use. I I feel like you have a lot of walls up. It feels like you are really interested in protecting yourself. You do not want to be rejected or hurt in this situation. And I feel like the whole disco night or post disco night saga involving this person he worked with who has a boyfriend and him, uh, the semantics of him saying, I've had feelings for her for the last couple months. Disco night was one month ago. The core of what bothered you about that is that I think that you also like him or liked him. I I think it's still a little early to use past tense if I'm totally honest. Yeah. You being honest with yourself about how much you like him or liked him is going to serve you many times over not only in this relationship, whether or not you choose to remain friends or try to actually pursue something romantic with him, that is totally up to you. But it will feel really good with the right person to truly open up, even if you don't have any guarantees. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, a romantic relationship involves risk. Yeah. You can't I, I have think, the good stuff unless you well, are you can be hurt well, by that, them. That's the risk part is what I was thinking about is it seems like this relationship was a relationship of convenience. For both people, like he mm. was getting a lot of what he wanted without a lot of risk, without a lot of investment, and you were getting a lot of what you wanted without the same. And I get why it's it's nice to have two people in a house doing their own thing in a relationship. That's fine down the road. Yeah. But the fact that you were like that was the amazing part is like he's just watching football. And I'm going to do my <laughs> thing. Like that kind of resonated with me. It's I think you just you kind of don't want to really get in it. And I didn't think he did either. He was giving you some teasing, disco night particularly, but I don't feel like either of you were ready to jump in. You were just kind of standing on the outside, enjoying the view. What you, you should be looking for is one where both people are like, this is what we want. It's not confusing. Mm -hmm. It's not convenient. It's actually what we really want in our hearts. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing about this guy in particular that makes it not really worth pursuing is... The fact that when you did try this romantically, both times around, you felt a lack of... It was ambivalence. Yeah, you ambivalence. You got a, a whole lot of ambivalence. He, just that lack post, of effort. Yeah. And I feel like that is all you need to know. Also, when you talked about how there wasn't great physical chemistry, yet you were having sex so regularly, what was in it for you? It was decent, she said. It was decent. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was, I mean... I'm not that experienced in that spectrum. So I feel like, I don't, I, I don't know. I just feel like he was, he was a giver for sure. You know? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and plus it's comfortable. You know, you had yeah. that comfort with each other that goes a long way. And also that comfort, that familiarity can also take away some of that uh, that you yeah. might've had with and that that's other guy. the funny thing is that last weekend when we hooked up, the reason I did hook up with him is because two weeks ago when he dropped her off, it was the first time he wasn't coming towards me. Usually when he comes over, it's like in five minutes, he's on me, you know, mm. So because he wasn't doing that. It just felt really I felt really bad. I was like, this is the first time like he hasn't shown, you know, he hasn't shown any interest. So last weekend when he did show interest, I just went for it and. It was like one of the best I've ever had. Yeah, but is it possible that the reason it was so good is because now he's a little more unattainable? No, I don't think so. I feel like I've, I've I know, I know when it is like that because I've liked guys who, who have been unattainable, but I think I've just been doing a lot of soul searching. Like even this conversation, when you said, you know, you hold all the cards to your heart, like, you know, heart and all those things, like these are things I'm learning that tomorrow I'm going to wake up with different realizations. So this month I've just, you know, been going to therapy. So doing all these things and it's just kind of opened my eyes to all the other things that I should have realized last this past year, I would say. For, don't ever use should in that way, because to realize this kind of thing at 29 is amazing. Yeah. Let me tell you, like you are not behind. So just enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you don't have to answer now, but this is uh, a question I want to ask. And I want when you answer it for yourself for it to be brutally honest. And that is if part of you hooked up with him as often as you did and let this go on sexually for as long as it did because of his 
physical uh, on you. The fact that you use the word obsessed with you, like there is something kind of addictive and it makes you feel powerful. Like as a woman, I think any woman listening to this will know what I mean. You could start to confuse it with something it's not. It's a bit of a drug to feel that desired. So yeah. you don't have to answer that now, but it's just something I want you to mull and, over. And I, and I will say this from experience. I've been in situations like this in my past where it's not there. There's, there's several there's like full on relationship where you're in love with each other. Yeah. Then on the other side of the spectrum, there's like pure, like, you know, 2 AM what's up, you know, are you awake? <laughs> like that kind of hookup situation. And then in the middle, there's something that's where you don't, you don't mind the company of the person and you have good physical something. relations, yeah, so relations. to speak. <laughs> Is that the word relations? Yeah. And it's very hard to let go of those if you're not in a relationship. Like mm -hmm. if you're freewheeling and you're single and you're having one of those, I, I I can literally, I can see the faces of the people I've had that with. And I still think fondly of them. Mm. It faded away, like faded into the distance, but it never ended. Like I was still like, oh, I still think it's about just that something person. more concrete came along. Yeah. There just wasn't that real hard connection where I was like, I can't live without this person. And, you know, I, I would get sick just not being around them for two weeks. You know, it was never there. I never needed them, but I wanted them and, and they wanted me. And it was like, why don't we just keep doing this? You know, and you could go on forever with those relationships. And there's nothing unhealthy necessarily about that unless you are really looking for a life partner or at least a, someone to make believe it, you know, someone who may become a life partner. Mm. I'm not saying you're out like husband hunting or whatever they want to call that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever. But still, she wants something yeah. serious. So. Like if you're looking for a life partner, those kind of relationships are the most dangerous because they will drag you down. They'll they'll distract well, you. You can lose years. From, you'll, you, yeah, you'll lose years. You'll have a nice, convenient, pleasant time. It'll be a decent time, not wasted time. You'll You'll enjoy yourself, but it'll be taking you away from opportunities to find a real life partner or to find real love. And th you'll know the difference right away. I mean, the difference between what I'm talking about, that kind of friendly sex thing where you like each other's company and it feels nice and it's always pretty good and being in love are black and white. Have you ever been in love? No. That's the issue. This is what you had. And I'm not... And I was getting to that. You screwed Sorry, up my punchline. I, I, I was going to soft land. I was soft landing that. But thank you. But you got to the you cut to the chase. That was good. You handed me the baton. I took it. I didn't want to say this, but you sound like someone who has never been in love because this relationship you're describing is clearly not love, and it's clearly not. And I don't want to use this term. This is a broad term, and I can't think of a better one. Healthy. It's not a healthy relationship in any sense of the word. I want you to recognize this as a is a case study for what you don't want to replicate in the future because ambivalence, hot and cold, confusion, sex, dr yeah, sex driving the purpose of the relationship, sort of being like, yeah, I like hanging out. Or it's even, nice. the, even Abby, the fact Abby's the, the yeah, impetus Abby. to bring you together, not just not the just obvious. you. Why do you need Abby? Yeah. Why is Abby? If it weren't for Abby, this never would have probably happened at all. Can you get your own dog? <laughs> no, it's just I. She was so perfect. Oh, I think Abby is the thing you really like. Here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she is literally like the best thing in the world. Let me just, yeah, she's just, you know. Oh, no. Lauren's showing us a photo of Abby. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very sultry photo of Abby. <laughs> yeah. And she's on her back, just yeah, like, come ready. and get it. She's ready for it. Okay, sorry. Well, she's look, very cute. I think that you should take my advice and cut this cold and move on and find a really good, healthy relationship where there's no mystery or confusion out of the gate, where you both are just like, wow, this is really fun. And we like each other and I want to spend a lot of time with you and I'm not going to be weird. But I also think in order for you to reach that point, you will first need to do some self-reflection on your ability to be honest with yourself about yeah. how much you like a person, how much you're willing to let them in and your, your willingness to dip your toe into risky waters. Yeah. There are not guarantees most of the time. I understand that it would be nice to be pursued a little more than it feels like he was pursuing you. Lauren, how are you feeling? I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of other details too, but I just- I don't know if the other Abby details are gonna make a really difference. Sad. So the fact that I'm never gonna see her again. Interesting though, that that's the saddest part. Yeah, that's, if that's, you're being honest with yourself, if you are being honest with yourself and it's really just Abby and you're not sad about the loss of his companionship. 
if he were to give me Abby tomorrow, I don't ever want to see him again. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you just wasted an hour of our time. (laughs) No, I mean, it's just, I think because of the other girl, I just feel like our situation is like, whatever, you know, I'll get over it. Because at the end of the day, it's like, there's another person in the picture. So how vulnerable do I have to be in this case? You know, so I I just feel like it's a no-go for me. I, to be honest, the other girl is like a complete non-issue for me. Like, total non-issue. She's a total red herring for me. Yeah. Like she plays no part in this drama. To be honest, when you were like five minutes in, I already knew what I was going to say about everything. Me too. I also knew what I was going to yeah. say. And we didn't even say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I was actually looking at you like we, we know we're going to say I thought you were going to say what I was going to say. And then you said something totally That's different. It. But five minutes in, long before you even mentioned the the coworker, yeah. I think that the coworker does not deserve the airtime no. in this caller session that she has gotten. Zero. She's totally irrelevant. You don't know if she even feels the same way. I, I also don't think Disco Night deserved any airtime. It also was meaningless to me. I mean, the month before Disco Night, we had stopped hooking up, you know? So we were like, donezo. It was just like opening a can of worms. And like I said, I was dating a lot of people in summer. He's not the only one, you know, he was a non-issue. Like I was talking to him about the guys I was dating and all these things. So I was living my life. I didn't think he was stopping me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really not my fault that I'm not meeting great guys. I mean, they were all, they were all pretty average. They were not yeah. my, you know, person. Yeah. So if I can't meet my person because he's hiding somewhere, like, you know, I'm going to go for this if it's convenient. But anyway, I think that, yeah, mm, I think. No. I don't again, know. Again, again. Well, well that's exactly I, what you just I, described you, is exactly what Andy described, you, which is that comfortable. Yeah, you just said convenient again. How is convenient what you want with a person you want to spend your, the rest of your life with? Like, let, I'm not I'm not pushing you to spend the rest of your life with somebody in the next two years. All I'm saying is that the whole goal here is you want real great companionship. You, yeah. You've said the word convenient several times. I've said the word convenient because this seems convenient. This is not what you should be looking for. This is just a distraction. From the very beginning, it's been hot, cold, hot, cold, hook up, no hook up, hook up, no hook up. I've never heard like, I'm in love with this guy. Like I have so many emotions about this. Mm-hmm. It just seems like you're talking almost like about whether you're going for Netflix or Hulu. <laughs> it's like nothing. <laughs> And Netflix is great. <laughs> and Netflix is better than several relationships I've had. But that's not the point. I love that she was like, Netflix. Like, there's oh, no obviously. Contest. I know. That was a ridiculous <laughs> well, I guess comparison. My friends have been saying that. I have a guy friend who kind of has the same point of view as you do. He's like, yeah, you're never going to find anyone if you keep this up. You know, he was like, try explaining this to a normal guy that you meet tomorrow. You know, he's going to run for the hills. So he thinks that our relationship is totally unhealthy. And I don't know. I'm kind of glad that that's the feedback you guys are giving me because like you said, disco night is irrelevant. At the end of the day, if I want to find someone serious, I can't have baggages, you know, like I want to enjoy it clean and just happy with a good, you know, attitude and everything. Like, I just don't want anything that's confusing. I didn't think it was confusing. All my friends did. So you guys saying that just kind of confirms it. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad he's telling you this, you have a good friend, but I also think that it, as much as you didn't get what you wanted in this, you also didn't really get hurt that badly. Yeah. And I think that you have to be open in the future to being hurt. You have to open your heart a little more, just like let it happen. And yeah. if you take those risks, you're going to start meeting the right people. Was I really, you have a very hard poker face. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't yeah. know where you're thinking. You could hate me. You could love me. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm enjoying this conversation. Okay. I assumed, but you never know. You assumed. I assumed. Of course. Why wouldn't you be? <laughs> Okay, Netflix versus HBO Max. You give me that one. That's pretty. That's good, right? Oh, oh that's, that's tough. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's still Netflix. I still got Netflix. Netflix. It's a close call, though. So I just want to touch on one thing you said, and then I swear we're going to wrap. And you said you might not have gotten what you wanted here. I want you to ask yourself next time you are dating someone, and you feel it getting a little more serious. Ask yourself what you actually want. Don't let that be dictated by what you think he wants. And also what you need. More importantly, yes. what do you need? Yeah, but you have to be honest with yourself about what you want out of the situation. It can't be this moving target. Yeah. It's going to feel so good when, you ha- when you're like, I want this. Oh, and you're not giving that to me. Now I know and I can move on. It makes it a lot easier to snip someone, you know? Mm-hmm. Lauren, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? Like my you, question was so confusing. What a no, journey. <laughs> I, 
I loved this question. Yeah. You know, we were having kind of a long Wednesday. It was like a hard day and you just perked us up. Yeah, I agree. I, I hope you don't feel like it was not a great question. I enjoyed that very no, much. I, it was yeah, I, yeah, I feel like it's like I remember two years ago, like, you know, I, I re, that's when I realized my heart chakra was closed. So I did Reiki. I did a lot of things like to work on it. So it's interesting you kind of touched on it because my friend last week literally looked at me and she said, do you think you're open? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm pretty open. And she was like, no, you're not like you're very <laughs> closed off. So for you to say that, you know, just by this 40 minute conversation, it tells me I have a lot of things to work on, if that makes sense. Mm, it sounds That's like you've great. got great friends. You have great friends. Listen to your friends. And this guy does not, <laughs> he doesn't make the cut. I'm sorry. He doesn't make the cut. <laughs> Abby makes the cut. This guy doesn't yeah, make yeah. the cut. <laughs> I feel like you should think about getting your own Abby. I think you should get an Abby and get one less of him. <laughs> Exactly one less. <laughs> Lauren, okay. thank you. We right. really enjoyed chatting with you. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. This was so exciting. All my friends oh. are excited to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Thank you so much and, right. and say hi to them for us. All right. Of course. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. So Charlene, one of my subscriptions went up in price this year. And you know how I knew? How? I yeah. think I know. All right. Give it a go. <laughs> Rocket money. Yes. You're holding your hand in the world of finance online when most, let's be honest, most companies are out to get you. They're trying to raise that price that I hope you don't notice. Of course. If I notice, I might do something about it. Yeah. You might be like, oh, actually, that reminds me I forgot I had that subscription. Did you know that over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot they even had? Or they would cancel them, but they're like, oh, the fine print, like what page do I go to? Oh, you have to write the company. They make it intentionally difficult for you to cancel these. Yeah. And I've always said that is part of the business plan. It's honestly, it's a little shady to me. It is shady. Like they're like, oh, it's just $3.99, $4.99, $7.99. A lot of us, when we have a huge credit card statement at the end of a month, don't notice a charge like that. I love that Rocket Money is like, hey, you've been paying this amount every single month. Is that something you want and need? If you don't want it anymore, we can cancel it with one tap. One tap. Yes. You don't have to go through a dance. I don't like dance. I don't like to dance literally, and I don't like to dance figuratively. You're not a bad dancer, though, I've got to say. I'm a... Bad, good dancer. I'm a good, bad, good dancer. I'm a bad dancer. <laughs> and Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you. Yes. Reduce them by as much as 20%. Isn't that insane? You can take a photo of your bill. I am not kidding you. And send it to them and they will do the rest. So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. With over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash shandy. That's rocketmoney.com slash shandy. Ooh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I loved that one. Yeah. It was a little messy. You know what it was? It was very messy. It was a hot mess of a question a and it was so relatable. Yeah, it kept going and I was just like, wow, this is this is the same story over and over and over again. And she's not realizing that it's the same story. Yeah. And I find that so interesting because, well, because she thought it was a journey mm -hmm. and it wasn't. Yeah. It was the same thing it was from the very beginning to the very end. Yeah. And isn't it funny? She kept talking about disco night and then she was like, well, I feel like I need to add more information. We hadn't hooked up for the month leading into that. But it's like in the grand scheme of them hooking up for basically, what, a year and a half, more yeah. than a year and a half, two years, like a long time, a long period of like on and off and She's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then they hook it's, up again. I'm sorry. The month of not hooking up to me is like, okay. Yeah. It almost doesn't matter. It like doesn't factor in. Sort of like the coworker, like the other woman who has a boyfriend. We don't even know. Like she might not even know his name. <laughs> like, it's so ridiculous. Like we really don't know. And do I think this guy is a champ? No. no. But I also don't think he's a horrible person. I think he's just been getting what he can I, I actually, out of this relationship as long as he could milk it. I got to be honest. I think he's been not confused about this relationship from the beginning. Oh, damn. I think he's felt the same way from the beginning. There are times when the physicality gets him a little more emotionally invested and then he gets distance and he kind of forgets about it and then he remembers about it and then he forgets. 
And I think he's just like, why would I not keep doing this as long as I can? And yeah. I'm living my life. I'm having this crush on my coworker. I'm dating other girls. Like, this is great. Yeah. And she doesn't force me. She does, she's not forcing me to get emotionally heightened with her. Yeah, she's but, not like, hey, where is this going? No. She's Instead, not, she's like, hey, can I look after Abby? And when you come over and drop her off, I, there's like a 40% chance I, that we'll have sex. Honestly, not only would most guys yes. continue this, but I actually don't fault him because she never put her foot down. As you said, mm -hmm. there was never a like, you know, pounding your foot moment. Yeah, What's yeah. going on here? It was kind of like, ah, oh, but you said this, but OK, we'll just hook up again. And then, OK, here's Abby. And OK, I'll take Abby and then we'll hook up again. And yeah, oh, but you said this. Ah, Who cares? Let's watch football and, and who cares? let's go to football. lunch. Isn't it funny how even when she did, it's it's so telling when she finally shows a little little bit of her 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 emotional you know like her, her cards her playing cards she's like it bothered me that you did that what her, yeah. the subtext was i was hurt that you told me one thing meanwhile you had a crush on someone else and all he really does in that situation is say that he was really drunk and that and then he starts crying there isn't a lot of like I hurt your feelings. Like I care about your feelings. To me, that's a very telling moment. Yeah, the crying gets me with him. I'm right, not, it kind of sounds sure like a cop out. The, the it crying sounds almost like a, it's like a, a thing. It's like a mechanism he uses <laughs> a mechan to get out of a that's situation. That's a dark way of looking at it. But I kind of feel like he was a little caught off guard and overwhelmed because it is very off brand for their dynamic sure, sure. for her to be like, yeah. "Hey, you said this to Maybe me." That he hurt suddenly me. felt bad. He was like, "Oh God, did I do bad?" Yeah, things? Yeah, or he was just like, "Mayday, mayday! What do yeah. I do? I'll cry." Yeah, because she'll back off which she did. Yeah. It worked. I, I think one of, the, one of the other things is in these situations, one party is not reading the signals that well. Uh -huh. And I think she wasn't really reading his commitment level. Partly because I don't think she was being honest with herself about how she felt about him. Right. It was just her reading. She, she When she told the story, it was like, then this happened, then this happened, and then we hooked up, and then that happened, and then we hooked up. It was no like, I didn't want to, or I did want to, I felt you turned know, on, know, I missed him, like nothing. You know the, oh, that's why I was focused on the coffee machine story, because that's when she started, she broke moment. into laughter. That was the only moment there where was it was true like emotion. joy. There yes. was like specific joy about the relationship. Yeah. This is a love triangle with a dog. And, <laughs> and the only thing that's loved a lot yeah. in this relationship is, is that the dog. dog. Yeah. And, and, and that's what the it way seems more by her than him. Yeah. Like he seems to be I, willing I to get rid of yeah, Abby maybe a lot. She, she can get the dog somehow. Maybe she can be like, what, name your price, sir. Yeah. <laughs> or can I look after the dog for a couple of days? And, and then just never give her back. <laughs> Like, no, sorry. Not just in hanging out. All right. I feel like we've said everything that can be said about this yes. one. But man, I loved it. I wasn't just saying that. I loved this question. I love questions that Sloppy go... Sloppy mess. Yeah, it was yeah. so real life, so relatable. Yeah. And I also feel like it kind of represented today's, you know, 29, 30 year old Brooklyn, New York dating scene, single yeah. looking kind of situationship and how quickly things can spiral into like a year and a half, two years of just... Oh. Oh, what yeah. the hell is going on if you don't put your foot down and come to terms yeah. with what you're looking for? It's a jungle out there. Yeah. Got to protect yourself. All right. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you. And that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye.